Hello, everybody. Welcome. We are glad you're here tonight. And uh, my name is Sharis. I am one of the pastors at Echoes Bellingham. We are a funky Lutheran small congregation here in Bellingham that tries to um, uh, just bring benefit to the larger area for all life, not just people, but actually all life. And uh, we are on the traditional territory of the Lummi and Nooksack peoples. And we want to acknowledge that reality and uh, continue our ongoing gratefulness of their stewardship of this land since time immemorial. And uh, Echoes meets on Monday nights, typically uh, at 6.30 and in a variety of capacities. We don't just do regular worship services like most churches do or churches have traditionally done. Worship is seen in many different capacities. This uh, evening is actually worship. Uh, it's an opportunity to get to know someone in our community and widening our networks is actually worship. It's a sacred thing. And uh, our guest tonight uh, for our monthly hamster church is Sukal Dub. And Sukal Dub is also known as Freddie Lane. That's how I first uh, knew his name. And uh, Freddie is a member of the Lummi tribe. And uh, he and I have known each other for I don't know, four to seven years, something like that. And uh, Freddie is tireless in his advocacy uh, for uh, indigenous rights, for the protection of sacred lands, um, for the limitations of the extraction of fossil fuels, for the protection of orca, our kin. Um, and uh, Freddie is generously uh, with us tonight, and I'm super excited for this. And this video will live online, and so if folks weren't able to watch it live tonight, um, they'll be tuning in later to be able to see this as it exists uh, in the interwebs. And if you have any questions, uh, do please feel free or comments to put them in the chat of both uh, Facebook or YouTube, and uh, and we will take them as they come in. So, Freddie. Sukhada, my friend, thank you for being here tonight. And thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. yeah. And I love the fact that you have got so much beauty behind you in the midst of in the midst of your stream. And I'm like, I just need a, some kind of blank wall. So um, I am loving your activity back there because it is a really nice contrast to uh, <laughs> to this white settler here. <laughs> it's just like, oh my gosh. Um, so um, we love to start off Hamster Church with uh, kind of the question, what's the most, a or not necessarily the most, but an interesting thing that you have done um, in the recent past? Uh, it could be here in, in uh, the Whatcom County somewhere, or it could be larger than that. What is one of the most interesting things you've done in the recent past? <clears throat> well, uh, thank you, Pastor Sheris, Siam and Jalacha. So he la kuna sanata choti kaya siam and astalacha salkeda salkeda sanasnat. It's true. My heart is glad to be here with each and every one of you, uh, hamsters, hammers, hammerheads, uh, <laughs> South Enders across the Bellingham Bayers. Good to be with you. Uh, uh, salkeda is my Indian name. Uh, Freddie Lane is uh, my Christian name. Um, the 11th child of the late Vernon and Nancy, uh, both of Lummi. Um, uh, just to give you some historical perspective, my father was the one that built the Lummi aquaculture and it opened in 1969. And so Vernon uh, was uh, one of those uh, uh, one of those leaders of the, the great past that uh, I uh, carry on his uh, words and work. And it's just good to be with you. Um, each and every one of you, uh, from the youngest to the oldest, uh, it's great to, to, uh, to, to, to be a guest here this evening. Um, yeah, I just want to, you know, thinking about, uh, this past year, uh, the Red Road to DC was, um, uh, I, I think, a life changing moment for me this past year. Uh, was an idea that uh, Teresa Sheldon and I, uh, Teresa Taleb, she's the Native American uh, political director for the DNC, and we were doing our uh, 
get out the vote voter registration campaign. And so we travel to all 29 federally recognized tribes here in uh, the great Washington state. And um, we had this vision of, okay, if the, if we have a change in, in government and uh, we have a change of president, uh, we, we wanted to, to, to have this idea to gift the, the president and so um for me it was it was like when i asked jewel in in uh december yeah i think it was december 2nd um 2020 and he said no and uh, it, so it, it was uh it was uh i i didn't know that that was the anniversary of when one of jewel's children had passed mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and I later found out, and after Joel thought about it, and, and the idea uh, also with Judith LeBlanc of Native Organizers Alliance, great people, um, just real powerhouses with uh, Native organizing. And um, so when we had the vision three, I think it was three years ago, uh, it's never been done. So... Lummi is a leader. We, we don't have to be on tribal. We don't have to be, you know, uh, in holding public office to be a community leader. And so for me, after I lost my reelection um, in 2020, well, we took on. And, and so I guess, thank goodness <laughs> that I didn't, you know, I wasn't on tribal council because when you're on tribal council, you know, you're bound by you know, what the tribe wants to do. And you can't say this and, oh my God, you might offend somebody that. And so, so, uh, Teresa and I called Jewel, then we called Judith LeBlanc. And then within like three months, like not even, not even, no, it wasn't even two, December, January, February, they raised 175,000. So that was just to get the the log for the totem pole, and and to um, and to put Jewel and them to work. Jewel and them had the totem pole done, in in just amazing record time, and uh, it, it just was so. I, I I missed the whole initial carving, um, but by the time we got into March, we was getting ready to hit the road in April. And, yeah, uh, it was fast. And 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 that getting to the Red Road to D.C. It was going to be the Red Road to the White House, but the Red Road to D.C. brought us to 117 communities, villages, sacred sites, cities, towns, uh, tribal communities, tribal reservations. I, I love saying the corner of the universe and back as we mm. know it. And uh, that, if you haven't, if you haven't driven the country, uh, I, I advise you to to do it. To uh, you can look up our uh, our map that we have. Um, I really should just uh, start like a Facebook page and just start like posting all of the stops that we were at because it was absolutely uh, uh, amazing to see all of us beautiful people coming together and uh, that's what we brought that's the that was the power behind uh just this past year so you know anybody can do this i i i, I i'm just inspired by uh, a lot of good that's happening uh, throughout our communities and you know the bellingham bay area it's just a a great place to to i was born and raised here um i live across the bay for those of you that that might live across the bay and you look out at the beautiful sunset well that's where we're at and uh but the the resiliency of uh, our communities coming together with the the red road to dc um i i just i i get this whole energy when I'm when I'm just talking about it, I took I'm a documentary filmmaker and, and photographer, and I, I just just myself I got fifteen thousand pictures. I got 
2,700 videos that I haven't even begun to edit yet. I don't even know how you begin to edit that much, that volume. Yeah, and and it it gets easy. It gets easy. I think I just need to start doing it before, uh, you know, this this year's out so we can have a really nice shot at at what we're getting ready to do for uh, 2022 and beyond. Yeah. And uh, initially, uh, you, when we did the, uh, we did what, what I call a Northwest tour. So I was the road manager for uh, the Red Road to DC. So having gone and traveled to every tribe here in Washington State, um, uh, I think we did that in 10 days. So we did. Uh, you we you did, got you got to every tribe, every tribe in Washington State. Yeah, that's well, no, not on this journey, but that's where I get my training from. After doing the being the road manager, it's like it's like, how do I explain it? I've never been a a a. a it's like being with a rock band. It's just, but every every you know, Jewel in the House of Tears, Uncle Doug and. You know they're the rock stars, and um, you know the the healing and and the hope and the 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 honoring of each other was that was the power of the the totem pole, and and everything that you know we brought to people putting their hands on the pole. I wish I had images. Yeah, to, I, I can do I that. I can um, see if I but, can throw um, some up here. Maybe, maybe after, uh, yeah, after uh, you guys are inspiring me to, I just think I just need to start a Facebook page and just post as many pictures as I can, um, just of the journey. Yeah. Uh, right now, okay, I'm sorry. So that's, let's see, I gotta that, that, that's been my uh, journey. We did the, the Northwest tour. And uh, that consisted of all the uh, all the tribes here in the the, the Northwest. Uh, you know, we went to Skokomish, Stillaguamish, all of our relatives that were the Mish people, Clactamish, right? Mm-hmm. We went out to the San Juan Islands. Uh, we went to Orcas, uh, San Juan, Shaw, and uh, even um, uh, even Lopez Island for the first time. And so uh, this was a real, uh, just a be- just a be- beautiful um, uh, journey. And this is Deb Holland, secretary, the first Native American uh, to to sit at a cabinet level position with the president. And so I call it this the twenty first cent the twenty first year of the twenty first century, and and the historic uh, the history that we're all making together. And uh, so, yeah. Secretary, go ahead. Yeah. So, if if folks haven't really heard of the Red Road to DC, um, uh, so K-Dub and uh, the House of Tears Carvers have uh, created totem poles to journey to other places in North America, both Canada and the U.S. Um, uh, to connect. Uh, communities along the way, wherever the totem pole is ultimately given and erected. And they're connecting these communities, um, imbuing these totem poles with blessings as they go. And they have been primarily about um, raising awareness for um, indigenous rights in relation to fossil fuel extraction um, and environmental degradation and um, and they've done amazing work in, in, in that regard. And the Red Road to DC was the last one, which was put together pretty quickly, as um, Freddie's talking about. Um, this is the totem pole, and it was uh, presented essentially to the Biden administration. Um, and uh, the Red Road to DC hit, as, as uh, Sue Kadab has said, 117, I think, stops you had. But if folks haven't heard of this, it, it's... It's a gargantuan undertaking. Um, all of the people that you were in touch with um, and the opportunities that folks had to interact with you, right? So it's not its not just that the, you got to meet all these people. It's that all these people had the benefit of meeting you because you were out and about and, uh, and ending up in DC. And the gift that you all have been in the midst of this, um, these journeys is just, I mean, 
it's priceless, really. So, are there any other um, images you'd like me to grab from from online? Oh, uh, if you just you can even just pan through our shared responsibility. If anyone, mm -hmm. you can always find all of the videos. Um, I I had I think I posted most a, a good majority of the the public events, um, but you could see the events when they were live. Yeah. Um, but yeah, our shared responsibility, a totem pole journey, is yeah. uh, where we can where you can uh, find uh, other yeah. images. All kinds of things, and so then all of these gatherings, and then when it it came to DC, oh my gosh, I got to watch that live and unbelievably powerful speakers, and how moving that was, and you can see that event um, right here. So. Yeah, that was a, it. It was very historic there, uh, coming through, uh, coming through uh, like Bears Ears. Have you ever been to Bears Ears? Go. If you've never been to Chaco Canyon, please go. If you've never, if you've never been to the Crazy Horse Monument, oh my gosh, you just gotta just just take the family and uh, go. It, it's pretty pretty amazing to. Um, to, to, to see the country, to, to, uh, uh, we were at the, the universe, uh, UCLA on my birthday, June 11th, <laughs> hint, hint. And, um, uh, they were, uh, there was a, 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 a relative, a trans relative who was just graduating and the, the inspiration that she took, you know, from, from our visit, you know, was just just remarkable. Uh, people's stories of 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 even getting healed from the totem pole. Uh, I, I I've I've witnessed stories of of families, um, you know, getting gaining healing, and um, uh, I couldn't even begin to to tell you the the Chaco Canyon was was just mind-blowing going you go back in history and and um there's a reason why you know there's a reason um it wasn't a coincidence when we went to these communities that was the power of it it wasn't a coincidence of um going to the snake river dam and actually driving up driving up to the to the the very beginning of the Snake River. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh! It's on, I believe, the Utah and Idaho border. And uh, as you're driving up the the basin there, um, they have these. Um, I mean, just amazing, like sand, like white sand beaches along the river that was on along the Salmon River. And when we was heading to uh, Bears Ears after uh, the Snake River Dam event. And that was just beautiful. And it was hot and we all jumped in the water and and uh, swam with the salmon. And it it, um, it was very it was very uh, healing. Uh, there, there's a you know, the community as we're coming out of COVID, this was the you know, this was the first time I think in in mid june when we was in um, california they finally lifted the restrictions and uh this is the original map of the red road uh this is the national tour so before the national tour uh, uh june 14th to august 4th uh we did a we did a slingshot from hollywood beach to hollywood beach to uh, in Port Angeles to Hollywood, California, and then to Hollywood, Florida. So if you can imagine doing all that and then doing this measly 6,000, you know, 759 mile route here, I hate to say it like that, but. Uh, I mean, you, you, well, you did a, you did a tour in just in Washington first, you did a tour in Washington and then you were going to do a West coast that went all the way over to Florida. And then you came and then you came back and did this. I mean, how many miles was it? Uh, it was 25,547 miles, I believe total. 
So if you can imagine all the zip codes that we went through, I actually made a, a cool shirt. I'll have to show you the shirt before I'm done here. Um, but it has a map of the United States and and the screen printer put all the names of uh, all inside the United States in little tiny print. And um, but we'll have to make sure we get we get you one of those. That's passports. cool. That's really cool. Awesome. So, um, and I remember reading, you know, of, of your your Facebook updates on some of the things that were meaningful to you, and, and Chaco Canyon being one of them, and uh, Snake River being another one of them. I enjoyed seeing photos of you um, having opportunities to go in, into swimming holes and to get into the water. Um, so, what what were some other memories for you along uh, the Red Road to DC? Uh, on my birthday. Uh which is June 11th, hint, hint. Um, I had, we had uh, three stops that we went to and uh, UCLA was the original. And then there was a group, uh, there was a group of uh, local natives there that asked us to come down to uh, this, this um, um, natural water spring. Yeah, Springs in, in downtown LA. And uh we met and we went and met um the group and they they were um they're trying to preserve it. There's a hundred and fifty-nine thousand gallons of fresh water that comes out of this spring in right in LA. And so the 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 the, the local natives there uh are are kind of the keepers of the, the the spring and so uh we went brought the totem pole by the spring we couldn't back it up close to it uh but we we, we was able to go and visit and um the, the the caretakers allowed me to go swimming inside the and it was just a it was just a uh, must have been yeah it must have been about six by six and uh it just was waist deep but the swim for me and the significance of the 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 important work that that we all have to do to to protect clean water and when i had that swim it was it was a it was just to me it was a spiritual swim and uh to 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 witness uh, the, the beautiful work that the relatives there in Los Angeles. Uh, uh, it's a historical site. I can't think of it off the top of my head, um, but that was, uh, that was really powerful on our, on our journey. Uh, um, swimming with Winona LaDuke up on the Shell River at the at the at the headwaters of the Mississippi River in Minnesota, that was amazing. Uh, we we were uh, right on the front lines with them. Um, they brought the totem pole in by uh, horseback. There were, uh, uh, yeah, it was uh, just a phenomenal uh to stand with you know Winona LaDuke she's a, a big time activist uh you know fighting I think they're fighting line three uh up in Minneapolis but they're trying to put the pipeline just over the over the river over the basin and so they have a really powerful fight uh you, you know corporations are people too uh, Citizens United, it's all, you know, so corporations are people, but the, you know, the thing that we have to remember is corporations, a lot of them are heartless. Uh, a lot of them, you know, they, they, they never have consequences. Uh, a lot of corporations, corporations can't go to jail. Uh, and so, uh, when we say, um, this isn't a standing rock fight, this isn't, a uh, nation fight this is our fight because uh, each and every one of you ha you know you have you have children you have grandchildren some of you have great great grandchildren and and so what 
we want to do when we when we make these stands is because water is going to be the next big fight. I hate to tell you this. I hate to break it to the world, but I'm I'm um, that's what my dad prophesized, Vernon Swaloos. He said we're going to start fighting over water. We're going to have when we was growing up, we never paid for water. Uh, I, I mean, sometimes. You, you, and so he was right on when when we were talking about this. And look at our beautiful land. Look at all the look at. I mean, I'm I'm sure there's some some uh, 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 some relatives, you know. Uh, but there's a big migration happening, mm -hmm. and and I'm not kidding you. I have friends uh, from uh, uh, the valley in in California. I have a lot of just. Just hearing the the migration, and that's what Uncle Doug talked about with the Red Road, is the the, the climate change. We 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 can't deny climate change. It's like uh, I I and and climate change isn't new to us Indigenous. You know, we've been here since time immemorial. Since when the chief always reminds us. Since when the the ice, the ice was all over here in the Pacific Northwest and the islands since before the Great Flood. And um, these are these are these are our teachings. This is my teachings from the late uh, Chief Salik. If any of you know uh, Chief Salik, he's we lost him in uh, this past year, and so it's it's um, really tender to bring up his name, but. The more I remember, the remember his teachings, and he always used to, he always used to remind each of us, you know, know where you come from, where do you come from, who are your parents and your grandparents, the these awesome life skills that, um, you know, COVID, uh, what COVID did is it's bringing us uh, together, you know, so powerfully. Uh, and and we're we're learning to. Uh, yesterday, I had my first family. We had our first family Thanksgiving. I have thank. We have. Uh, I'm eleven of twelve, so we have a huge. I think about 80, 85 of us in the family. But it was the first time we had a had a Thanksgiving gathering, a holiday gathering, and you know, over a year, and it just was good. It was like the Red Road to D.C. It was just awesome to 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 sit to sit with one another to shake hands of course you know we follow all the safety protocols and we ask every, everybody to vaccinate and so i'll put my vaccination plug in if you're not vaccinated <laughs> it's your life it's your life and and remember somebody loves you somebody loves you and and so do it for your loved ones that's the easiest way I can try. I have family members that 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 don't. And okay, so that's my plug. But every every event that we had, everyone was vaccinated, and that was just great to see. And in, in um, uh, this past week, um, not to talk about what I'm currently doing, but um, I, I'm I'm at Freddie Lane, Freddie Quinang Lane. It's P H R E D D I E. Is my Facebook and. We did uh, salmon, uh, Snake River. It was the 30th anniversary of the Snake River Salmon Endangered Species Act. And um, you know what, what, what can happen at the Snake River? Can happen. It's happening here. And uh, I don't know about all of you hammers and hamsters out there, but I like I like my I like my sockeye salmon wild. I like my yamich wild. And uh, but but there's just no salmon returning, and and so we we have um, you know we're we're all, we're all in this together. We're we're, we're neighbors, we're friends, um, but uh, I, we had an event uh, this last Saturday, and there was about seventy five people at the event, and uh, we, we were just trying to bring awareness to the Snake River. Uh, sockeye that are almost extinct almost extinct and so um you know we, we're we're um 
we got some uh, future events coming up too. Uh, I, I believe the Jewel and, and uh, former uh, uh, J Jeremiah, my nephew, Julius, former chair there, we're working on a, a Snake River totem pole journey to, to help them bring awareness um, to the extinction. And so this is the 30th anniversary. It's the perfect, I don't know how we get these perfect timings with, with uh, the totem pole journeys, but, you know, originally we planned on taking off in, in May, May 24th, we was going to leave for the national tour, but COVID, everything was pushed back um, for our DC, for our national tour. And it was for a good reason. It, it wasn't a coincidence. That's, that that's how I, I I I feel where we're at right now, and and how we're all getting through this together. It's not a coincidence. And so, what? Um, uh, I'm sorry, I can keep talking, but that that in, that medicine was everybody's medicine on the journey. That was mm -hmm. the power of the. The, the the power of the pole, the totem pole, and, and all those that were gathered. Um, I, thousands, yeah. thousands upon thousands of people um, had the opportunity to lay their blessing on this pole and their energy into, um, into the world and into others for um, protecting sacred sites and um, listening to indigenous voices. Um, so incredible stuff. And I'm really glad to hear that you're going to be heading back to the Snake River. Um, that being one of the stops that was so meaningful um, for you. Uh, and I look forward to seeing that new totem pole. Um, so the, the, endless, the endless creativity that uh, Jewel and Doug have for, for crafting these and making these is extraordinary. Yeah, we have... Uh... Uh, the next journey is lined up is for the next three years, uh, right through 2024. And uh, I recently began uh, uh, organizing for a national march on Washington on June 2nd, 2024. It's a Sunday. It's the weekend after Memorial uh, Day weekend. And... Um, our march is going to uh, probably be the largest indigenous. That's what I'm shooting for. Um, since I, I I ran for public office again, and I I obviously didn't didn't get on council, uh, but that doesn't stop us, you know, as community leaders. And and so you'll be hearing a little bit more about uh, the national, but I might as well let you know right now here. Put it on our calendars. Get June ready for 2nd, it. Yeah, June second, twenty twenty four. Just really off the top of my head, uh, envision a, 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 a national procession with all the tribes and all their flags and their banners and their regalia, and and uh, uh, have the have the procession. Uh, start that week, and so right after Memorial Day, um, I can't think off the top of my head if it's uh, 2024, May 27th, I believe it would be, um, and uh, so we'll go Tuesday, each day we'll have different themes for and uh, for the um, recognizing the, of the indigenous people, whether it be treaty, sovereignty, uh, you know, we, we really want to bring our all of our communities together and it's not just just our indigenous our indigenous groups but indigenous groups from around the world and and the power when we was at cop um cop 21 in paris we stood with the indigenous uh from around the world and so that's the vision of of bringing our communities together to to, to help recognize uh, each other's fights uh, around the world and um, and across Canada. And uh, so it'll be a week long event. You know, I figured uh, when I seen the kids uh, from Florida, when they did that national march, 
after the 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 um after the shootings down in Florida and 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 those kids the kids organized that national march against guns on and and to and brought it to Washington DC that was my inspiration right there that mm -hmm. was i was inspired by just those kids and and the youth i mean we're we're all young at heart and um and and good happens and and that was their their good that was their power uh behind the march and i thought that's 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 what we need to do for indigenous people it's the uh june 2nd 1924 is the uh what they call the snyder act was passed by um when we as american indians it was called the american indian citizenship act so oh the good the 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 indians finally got citizenship <laughs> and on june 2nd in 1924 and so to, to look yeah. at the you know yeah. the the centennial so of that years and it's later. an election year it's an election year so we'll be really getting uh the native vote out for the 20 because i'm a big native uh, uh, if any of you want to help organize or do a petition i mean our campaigns uh, 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 just just look me up. I, I will be able to help you because this is kind of, I guess, after the Red Road to D.C. And, and all the work, the totem pole journeys and, and everything that we've done together, Pastor, uh, it, 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 you know, we just got to keep passing the baton. You know, that's all we're doing is we're we have a baton and we're running. To, to 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 protect sacred sites um but this this brings our you know it's it's good for the country you, the country is going to break out in a civil war swear to god and, seems like uh, it's heading that way for sure it, it, it it's it, it's just in a dangerous we're we're at a dangerous turning point with the uh, the rhetoric of lies uh the rhetoric of uh extremism i mean uh Think about what the country is going into right now. And so we need to give some hope. We need to continue to, to do what, what you're doing, do what we're doing to bring, the, bring our communities back together. Um, uh, COVID won't be the last pandemic. And uh, we, we uh, I, I just feel I just feel this need for for us to help you know bring some awareness to what you know what um, uh, what the state of our nation is and um, it, it's it's a little scary to go out uh, but we can't you know we're 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 all survivors we're all resilient and um, we'll all get through this together and and so. I think really having our 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 platforms with with your church and thanking everybody for for listening um i i i always let people know you if you want my advice you have to come ask you have to call me or ask me um but you know after the red road to dc um everything is just kind of a campaign to me you you have to you know you i mean Look at Standing Rock. Okay, somebody somebody shared this on, you know, yeah, we lost, but did we? You, mm -hmm. you, you couldn't buy greater press. I mean, Lawrence O'Donnell went out to, I mean, Jane Fonda went out. Um, I I never knew who Mark Ru Ruf Ruffalo. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't know who Mark Ruffalo, but he, he, he actually retweeted my words at standing rock and my partner my partner duran was like oh my god my proof of those retweeted like three of my quotes and i was like you know i don't i i don't i don't watch the avenger i don't i never seen the incredible hulk but but it just the the the, the power that uh uh we're we're bringing with you know it's hope you know, we, the country, yeah. we have some hope and 
Standing Rock raised, raised so much awareness to be like, oh, gosh, I think we need to be concerned about indigenous rights and um, land use. And no, you can't go through there if they don't want you to go. It's their land, right? And all of a sudden, people are thinking, oh, uh, and now they're looking at other things. Like you, it, it just, it, it expands um, the imagination and expands the the awareness and other things can get worked on because people now are, are um, interested in um, and cognizant of because it's it's now been in front of them versus the ability just to overlook it because they don't know it's there. Now they can't do that anymore. Um, so Standing Rock was amazing. I didn't get to go. It was such a bummer. Uh, but I've enjoyed hearing the stories of those who have and and getting retweeted by Mark Ruffalo is pretty, it is pretty cool. <laughs> nah. that yeah, pretty that, cool. Was, that was great. And have you got another a paddle journey uh, involvement coming up? Uh, you know, I've been trying. I uh, had, we were advertised September 1st uh, for a canoe event. Um. I noted to myself, it gets, starts to get cold in, in September, so we won't be trying that anymore for Labor Day weekend. But uh, we postponed our event uh, for September 1st to uh, 5-22-22. So it's a Sunday. Um, I just picked 5 because it kind of sounded kind of cool. And I could, it's easy to remember. Um it's right but, before Memorial Day, hey? Yes. And so we was going to plan a paddle through the uh, through our traditional territory in the Clactamish Islands. Um, we're going to go to Lopez Island for uh, two nights, San Juan Island for two nights, and then a night on Orcas. And so, yeah, 5-22-22. And then on uh, May 27th, which is a Friday next year, uh, we plan on having a landing here at uh, Lummi Nation. So it'll be a gathering of the eagles. Uh, uh, that's what I'm calling it. Uh, we haven't had one in a year, so it's uh, it'll be uh, an encampment. Uh, so uh, there won't be all these millions of dollars coming from the tribe, you know, to help me put on for security and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's just out the door. Uh, what I wanted to help initiate was a gathering just because we need to gather. And mm -hmm. uh, so w w by pushing it back uh, into next year, I hope it doesn't get pushed back. Somebody told me to move it back to uh, June because then all the kids will be out. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking about that, but it's just an encampment. Uh, we're going to uh, have 10 canoes uh, go out through the San Juan Islands, out through the Clactamus Islands. Um, and then the rest of the canoes, will, if they choose to come or they could, you know, they could paddle up uh, the south end. Um, but it's going to be just an encampment. So everybody's going to bring their just they're going to bring their own food. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to be self-sufficient. I, I, you know, just as an organizer, i um, going to have to organize, you know, the basic infrastructure of, uh, you know, uh, Santa cans and hand washing stations and showers and laundry and, and maybe a couple of kitchens. So that's kind of so rather than the big, great uh, canoe journey. Um, it'll be a real scaled down and kind of down to earth, uh, gathering. Bit a more intimate. gathering. Yeah. 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 A bit more intimate. Yeah. And we'll have it down on the grounds. Uh, a, yeah. Uh, in an open event. So I'm going to need to, to, to find some bleachers, um, because I figure, you know, people are sitting up pretty high at the Stomish grounds. Um, they'll get a really good, you know, we'll get, we'll get a really good view. And, um, yeah, so that, that's, that's coming up. It's either 522, 22 or 622. Um, we'll, we'll know here, but we're six months out right now. So I, I've started planning. 
Um, the Snake River uh, totem pole journey is being planned for next spring too, as well. So I'm going to try and coordinate around around that. Um, we have Stomish. If for any of your viewers that have been to the Stomishes of the past, uh, I was the director '96. I, I was on the Stomish committee uh, since '96 to 2008. And um, we hosted the canoe journey in 07. If uh, any 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 of the hamsters uh, remember the paddle to Lummy, that was our first potlatch. I was the director of the event. So we had 26 committees. And I guess really doing all these, uh, these stomishes and canoe journeys really helped like, help really bridge, uh, bridge a, a lot of the good work that I'm that I'm, I hope I'm doing now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the canoe journeys have been postponed. And so uh, our relatives up in uh, Nanaimo, uh, which would have been in 2020, we hosted in 2019. Um, Paddle to Lummi, if you want to go and look at some videos uh, on uh, YouTube, there's there, there's quite a bit. Uh, we had... Uh, we had uh, awesome turnout for uh that paddle um it was just kind of thrown together and nobody was picking up 19 and so he wasn't chairman then but uh lawrence uh solomon and i and travis uh brocky were, were at, at uh puala when we announced and literally put it together in a year uh that that was uh that was very special. So it's just great to have the canoes come through uh, our traditional territories. I like this idea about being an encampment. And uh, I'm, I'm, I come from the Eagle Clan, the, or the, I'm sorry, the Quellington Clan, the Golden Eagle Clan. And uh, so it, really looking at how tribal journeys uh and and just the investment and the, the tens of thousands of people that come into the community and the organizing of uh security and you know infrastructure and food and rather than worrying about feeding everybody we'll just have the gathering and and so what i what i feel from the gathering um it, it's just really gonna help help us you know, start uh, the summer off in a good way. Start 2022 off, uh, you know, with the canoes coming ashore to hear the, the the songs and the dances and to see the regalia and the masks and 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 to hear our relatives from up and down the the, the west coast and 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 some of our relatives visiting who were on the totem pole journey. So that's mm -hmm. when we're going to invite a lot of the relatives to come up and uh, participate and see the canoes. A lot of them have never seen like the Pacific ocean. I've never been to the West coast. I'm like, all right, come on out, you know, just bring your camper and bring your, you know, your cooler and your, your favorite foods. And, and I, I think we'll have a, you know, I think we'll have a really, really beautiful gathering. The other thing, and this is maybe something that we can work on together too, um, Pastor, is I want to do like a Clactamish days. I want to do like, I don't know, a three-day, a four-day event right down at uh, Maritime Heritage Park and and let the arts and crafts vendors, you know, we got we to gotta support our, our local uh, 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 artists and, and local small businesses, uh, especially during Christmas time, but I always, I always like to, I always wanted to see something down there with, with uh, just a cultural exchange. So people look at lummies, they look at nooksacks, they look at semiamus, and and all you know. A lot of times, all people think is, oh, that damn casino took all my money. Just kidding, uh, you, you know. But but to to really have a, a, an exchange with our communities with. Food. I mean, you wouldn't believe all the the, the 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 food vendors that we have out here and the awesome cooks. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I want to do something like that in 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 2022 as well, just to keep 
you know, just to keep keep coming together, keep uh, keep coming together, and and we can have. Uh, I, I I know of a blues band, uh, Indigenous Blue. Uh, I I know of uh, Native comedians, <laughs> you know, we, and and just to bring a, a, a just a different, I guess a different, um, a different um, kind of gathering, you know. But with well, our neighbors, yeah. And it's very meaningful to have it at Maritime Heritage Park because of where it is. Um, that being the estuary uh, that your ancestors, um, that was one of their main food gathering places. And according to some history, it's where some of the first white settlers also encountered um, uh, your people, the folks who were here. Um, yeah, there's a so, there's a great there's a great story I, I wanna I just now that you brought it up to share. And I think this would be great to have storytelling done as well as a part of the, mm -hmm. the events for um but um so if you ever drove any of any of you ever drive down to Chuckanut Drive, okay. Um so out in the middle of Chuckanut Bay is the little the little island. Yeah. Chuckanut Island or Dot Island. Yeah. Yeah. Dot Island. I call it, always call it Chuckanut Island. But um, that's a sacred site down there. If you ever, if you ever go down there, that's just, uh, just, it's just beautiful. Um, but in Chuckanut Bay, um, one of the stories that, that I remember um, from our elders is that when the creator howls is his name howls howls it's spelled x l h howls and uh the great changer there were there were uh, villagers that would say the changer is coming the changer is coming in in the reason they knew that he he was the creator is his canoe needed no paddle. That's how powerful Hal's canoe was. It just paddled, it, it just, the power of Hal's, his his mighty power. And, and when Hal's came uh, into uh, Chalkanut Bay to the village, village site that was there, he was so powerful that when he walked onto the shore to the village site there, and if you ever go out, if you're ever blessed to get to go out to one of those points, there's like two points in Chuckanut Bay. Well, Hal's walked, walked ashore to the village site, and everybody was in in awe of his canoe that needed no pa no paddle. That's how that's how that's how they knew he was the creator, the the changer, Hal's. And so when he stepped foot along Chuckanut, he started walking ashore and he was so powerful that his, uh, his, his, just his presence. So he was so powerful that his footsteps were engraved. So if you walk out there and you could see, if you ever, if you ever see the site out there, it's a, it's a sacred site, but how that's where it looks like somebody somebody's footprints in the sand over in Chuckanut Bay. But um, that's the story of that, that I just remembered, you know, just, just, just sharing with, um, um, sharing with you about how, you know, how we can, how we can get to know each other and learn from what, you know, learn from each other and, and um, get to be good neighbors. What is, I know it, if, if we could tell stories and hear more of your stories and if people want to actually see uh, one of the totem poles of the House of Tears Carvers, you can go to Maritime Heritage Park and see the totem pole of Salmon Woman, which is a super important story. And the story is um, uh, right there on a plaque right next to her. So you can see a little bit of one of the creation stories. Um, uh, of folks in this area and and see the beautiful it's a beautiful totem pole it was just restored a few years ago as well so um, that's an opportunity to see to see their work um, one that's not fully painted like the ones that go out on the road are just completely painted this one is 
Uh, just got a little bit of paint on it, not a lot. Um, and it's, it's most of it's natural wood, um, but it's just beautiful. And in, and in Ferndale too, along Waterfront Park, uh, Jewel has a bunch. He actually called me the other day um, and he just, I believe he just finished, he finished the, the Chief Sleep totem pole. Uh, I'm not sure what he has planned for that one. And then uh, the Quahoy totem pole, he uh, repainted it, put copper. It, it looks, it's beautiful. Um, and uh, I guess that one's going to Orcas Island uh, wow, to cool. be put up sometime, uh, maybe this spring. Yeah. But, um, so, we'll let you know when we have blessing ceremonies and come to town. That'd be great. That'd be great. I, I love that. Uh, it's, it is, it's incredibly sacred um, and such an honor and a privilege to just even be there, uh, let alone have a little tiny role. Um, if, if you, so sharing stories, um, if you were to, um, the, the, as, as I've heard you say many times, the way of life for Lummi is the Shilangan, your way of life. What are some of the, the ways of life, some of your Shilangan, that uh, would be helpful for folks like me who are uh, just settlers uh, here um, to adopt, to live, to live a better way, a good way on the, on the land? What, what would be something you could share with us about some of your Shilangan that could actually help all of us? Well, thank you. I, thank you for the question. I. I, um, how we're taught, like this is the house of Spalus and Snina. Um, my dad, uh, I, I, I would really, uh, look to as, um, our, our chief. So dad would be the chief of our, our family. In, and like I mentioned, I'm at number 11 of 12. And, um, you know, really, you, you know, family is everything. Fa our, all of our families are not perfect, okay? Um, but if you're, um, if you're fighting with somebody in your family, stop. You know, um, you, you never know when someone's gonna, gonna depart this earth. You never know, and uh, I, I've always, um, I guess I've always shared that with, um, even with yesterday with our Thanksgiving, and uh, look around, there, there, there's uh, a lot of us, uh, um, I, I, I could possibly have more friends on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, I miss a lot of my old friends. But but family is everything, and, and you know when when um, to us as as indigenous, you know the a lot of people don't know this, but behind every I heard this from my aunt Mary Plaster, and um, she's uh, my she's my spiritual mother. She's my Siawan mother, and uh, when I'd always used to stop and and. They used to tell me just all different, different stories. Um, but um, she used to say behind every, every great chief is a powerful woman. And, and so for you women, you know, women are the life givers. Women are the power. Yeah, men are chiefs and you know, they're big CMs and they're the, you know, they wear the pants in the family. But the way Auntie Mary said in our way, the women were very powerful. And she said, I'll tell you how powerful our Clactomish women were. In, in ancient times, in ancient times, our, our women or girls, or grandmothers, or great-grandmothers. If the clan or the family 
wanted to build a, a longhouse or, or to build a canoe, they would go up into the mountains. There used to be just, there used to be ancient, ancient forests all, all over. The, the trees were six, six feet wide, you know, eight feet wide, the, the ancient. And she'd say in the ancient times, she says, never forget how powerful women are. She said, just, and I haven't shared this story much, but I remember it because it, I was just so intrigued by my auntie and why she was teaching and telling me these stories. She told me this story a hundred times. But the men would cut the, the big cedar tree down, have prayer. You know, when when you go out and, and you're one with nature, you know, the trees are very powerful. And and we don't just cut a tree down, you know, there's there's a ceremony that has to um if it's gonna be your home or if it's gonna be your canoe. You know, there was there was ceremony for for just about everything. That was our oneness with 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 Mother Nature. And um so the men would cut the tree down, lay it down, and they would de-limb, take all the limbs off, and uh, cut the top off. And then they started clearing a path down the, down the, down the hill, down by the water where the canoe will eventually take shape. And um, but the reason the men, after they de-limbed it would start the trail going down from the mountains. It was the women. It was the life givers. And the women of the clan of, you know, the 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 tribe of our Clactimus people would 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 sing a song. They'd have a power song. And they with every song, there's, there's, after the fourth verse, the, and she said the women would, would put their, they wouldn't lift, they wouldn't lift the log, but it was the power of the life giver. And they would put their, their, their hands above the, the mighty cedar tree and the elder women and all the girls and all the mothers would be all along on each side of, and they would put their hand up on onto they wouldn't touch the cedar tree but they would their and their power of that song and their faith is what levitated it, it levitated uh the the cedar tree and the women would walk side by side along the cedar and just walk the the cedar tree all the way down singing that same song hmm. and so 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 that's why we you know we we hold our our grandmothers and our great grandmothers in in the highest regard um uh women um you know we're 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 seeing a a, a a beautiful awakening of, I mean, look at our two senators uh, here in Washington state. Um, look at Deb Holland, uh, just blessings to her for, you know, being the first uh, American Indian woman um, to be, you know, at the cabinet level, uh, secretary of the interior. And and so the you life givers, the, the women have really, Really, all of our women, that's how we say it, all of our women are, 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 are powerful. And, um, you know, where, where would our families be? That's what my auntie used to, used to say. Where would your families be without that, that matriarch? Look at, look at uh, Tokatai, look at Skali Chaktanat's uh, grandmother. She was the matriarch. Um, uh, of the family of the you know the um, the Alpod, but the matriarchs are the um, are the um, 
real strength. I, 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 I was a mama's boy. Okay, I'm going to admit it. And now I know why I was a mama's boy. Because um, she, she was, she was, she was pretty tough, my mom. And um, we have, a, I think, about a 30, I think they have about 40, 40 grandchildren, probably another 40, 45 great grandchildren. We have great, great grandchildren now wow. in the family. And, and so, you know, uh, I, I, the other thing I've been sharing with people is call your, call your family, call uh, our families need to start getting together. Uh, this is how we see it out here because we've been having a lot of funerals, but you know, we need to start gathering more, get vaccinated, uh, you know, open your windows and invite guests over. And, you know, we're, uh, we were, we were handing out hugs at the, the rally this past weekend that was it was just special um i i really think with um how our communities are are are, are coming together you know um I, I think we need to keep fighting hate um i think we need to uh continue to make good happen uh i i'm i i was just gonna help organize a a, a bunch of um um, a bunch of local artists and arts and crafts people, uh, tribal members to, to help them with their small businesses that are all struggling. Um, but, you know, we everybody has their calling. Everybody has their job. Everyone has their 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 calling in life. And and I, I think really, really uh, helping out one one another and inspiring one another. I mean. I, it, I tell people, I was telling them on the journey and I was like, just call me. Here's my number. Let's talk. And, and, and I, I'm, I'm still in, in, in um, still good friends with a lot of people across the country. And that's what we need more is we need to, you know, your, your platform right here. This, this is what I call a virtual fire. This is our yeah. virtual fire with Pastor Saris and, 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 and from my house, we can literally say from my ha house to your house, you know, we're, we're, we're friends, we're family. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to get through the pandemic uh, together and stronger and, and more resilient. And, and I think for, for young people, you know, if there's a young person or, um, you know, do everything you can to to take care of your parents and your grandparents. Uh, I'm I'm not one to tell people how to raise their kids, um, but I am one to tell people. You know, uh, if you have a loved one in a nursing home, go visit them. Go 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 bring some flowers to them, and uh, you know I I think. Uh, you know, there's a lot of lonely people in the world. There's a lot of lonely people in the world. And, um, uh, you know, just really, I, I just think uh, we, I just was watching on uh, World News um, just tonight about this um, uh, teenager. And um, I can't remember how much he raised. He raised several tens of thousands of dollars and he bought uh, about 500 pairs of shoes and he just raised the money for his foundation and he was giving them out to needy kids. And I was like, wow, that, you know, it's, just, I guess it's just inspiring to, to again, see good, that good happens. Um, you know, nobody's, nobody's perfect and it ain't a perfect world. Um, but we can, um, we could still, you know, make it, uh, make it a good place and, and like what we're doing. And when we have gatherings, we'll, in, we'll invite you out, Pastor. That'd be and, awesome. Uh, you know, we'll think, uh, I, I think after getting through this, this next winter, you know, yeah. this really encourage everyone to, uh, bring a little bit of normalcy. My nephew, uh, Dr. Lane, 
uh, he's the medical director up here at Lummi, at the Lummi Medical Center. And I asked him, I said, okay, be honest. Okay, be honest. When do you think things will get back to normal? He said five years from when COVID started, so March. So probably wow. in, yeah, he says that that was his prediction about, you know, cool. really. But we did talk about, you know, um, you know, again, our resiliency. Um, uh, we just um, really, really want to encourage everyone to, you know, to uh, try and have a Merry Christmas this year. Uh, yeah. if, there, if there is such a thing. I I, I was joking around uh, earlier this month. I was like, okay, Christmas is canceled. Yay. <laughs> no shopping, but. You know we're 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 all resilient and and it was this it was really good yesterday to get together with family and so you know just yeah I'm I'm looking forward to that too to have um, a meal with my my folks coming up which I'm excited about they live down in the Portland area and uh, my partner and I will be heading down there and just really excited about that we'll be together our Christmas was our Thanksgiving and our Christmas was canceled last year. And this year we'll be together for Christmas again. And but we're we're not doing presents this year. It's like we know that there's um, deeper things to meet one another with. Um, and gifts have always been uh, they haven't necessarily been extra extravagant in my family, but they've been important, right? You to, you need to give something that actually is is meaningful to the person. Yeah. And uh, so we take a lot of time with it. And um, uh, and we're not doing it. We're choosing not to do that this year. We've got too much going on and we just want to enjoy being with one another. Um, so, yeah. So reaching out to, to family, um, appreciating family and your encouragement. If you know someone in a care facility, um, I have a, a, a dear friend who is a hospice chaplain who has mentioned that um, during COVID, particularly before vaccines were available, um, just the mortality rate of those um, uh, in the hospice system was raising. And it's it's not just necessarily COVID. It is isolation. It is being separated. It's um, not being able to be in community with one another that can literally kill people. Um, yeah. So thank you for that, for that encouragement. And we've got um, folks thanking you for, for being here tonight with us. And uh, we are grateful. Uh, um, Sulcata for all, oop, I'll put it up there again. I just saw you put your glasses on. Um, grateful for who you are in this area and your advocacy is tireless. It is, um, we, we are gifted, um, with, with you, with all of Lummi, with all of Nooksack, um, and the, um, the legacy of Semiamu, uh, to, have that ground into this land, like literally embedded here. Um, and you specifically, and uh, the work that you do is, uh, it, it's it's making a difference. Um, so I want to bless you and thank you for who you are and, and all that you do. And uh, um, I, I hope we will continue to have our paths crossing and, uh, and being able to potentially work together on some things would be lovely. So definitely. And I, I guess I can encourage you to um, uh, you bring your parents up. Uh, you might give Jewel a call. I mm -hmm. think you got his number um, yeah. and, and maybe bring them out to, to see those totem poles there. They, they are beautiful, amazing sight to see. And you came out that last time. And so yeah. um, maybe before uh, we, do our next journey or right before uh, the canoes come in or we do Clactimus yeah. days uh, downtown at Maritime Heritage. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll reach out to you. and That'd be great. I, the, when I got to go, this was the first time this first year I got to go see the totem pole when it was, when it was being constructed and when it was being, you know, carved into existence. And uh, um, I, and the impetus to get me out there was I was putting together a, a brief uh, worship video. Um, the Lutheran, I'm a Lutheran pastor, and so the regional Lutherans had asked if I would um, kind of oversee a worship time for when all the Lutheran pastors were gathered together virtually. And so I got to interview, um, you know, Jewel and 
and dug uh, while they were carving and it turned into this beautiful production and it's it's on echo's facebook page uh, if you ever want to see it but um people were really moved by it by the words by the work um and, and you you made it possible for me to, to get in there and have an opportunity to be there so it continues any, to spiral out yeah you know? and anyway i you know thank you for reaching out thank you to to all the the viewers thank you for listening i i'm just honored to 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 be your friend and um any way we can um you know make the world a little bit better just give me a call <laughs> And uh, people can find you uh, through the Red Road to DC um, site. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, great. All right. And uh, if if folks were going to be donating to another totem pole uh, journey, uh, can they donate through that site still? Uh, would they be donating to the Lactimus Foundation? How how would they be contributing? I mean, for yeah, I would. Um... Jeez, you know, a lot of times I just give Jewel a call. I usually okay. give out his number. So, uh, and, and Jewel, uh, well, you can find me at our shared responsibility, a totem pole yep. journey. And then um, I'm on uh, Freddie Lane, Freddie Quinang Lane, uh, and it's P H R E D D I E uh, Quinang, X W E N A N G. Um, but yeah, I, and and you've inspired me. I I, I just might start uh, doing this Red Road to DC uh, page and just start posting my uh, a, a lot of the images that I have. It's uh, we'll let you know when we get the documentary done because it'll it it'll be great to do a screening uh, a screening with you and your viewers. Heck yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the your website's beautiful, Red Road to DC. It's a really pretty site, so awesome. Yeah. All right, my friend. Um, yeah, definitely blessings on you uh, for this uh, this season. And uh, as Christmas comes up, and uh, I'm very grateful. And uh, we'll be seeing you again. Uh, as far as Echoes goes, next week we have got um, uh, a really fun thing happening. It is our creative church. So once a month, we uh, explore the intersection of arts and spirituality. And so our creative church is going to be making Advent wreaths. You can find out more information about that on our Facebook page and uh, on our website, echoesbellingham.org. And then the week after that, on December 7th, um, which is a Tuesday, it's not a Monday. We usually meet on a Tuesday. Uh, sorry, usually meet on a Monday. We're meeting on a Tuesday. We're going to be at the Black Drop Coffee House. Um, so just an opportunity to be meeting in the community at a wonderful coffee shop that does amazing things for the sake of the community. So we'll be there. Um, but yeah, you can find us, you can find us, uh, on, um, Facebook and on echoesbellingham.org. So, uh, blessings to everyone who's been here tonight. Uh, thank you for your time. And for all those who are going to watch this later, I know it's, it's sometimes a lot easier to watch one of these after it's been out. And so I'm excited for all the folks who will be uh, meeting you um, weeks, months, years down the road uh, through stumbling onto this video. So um, I'm grateful. And we will see you again sometime soon. Thank you, Pastor. All Love right. you all. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy <laughs> Thanksgiving. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye, Sokay Dub. Bye-bye. Thank you.